Hey, this is Chris Jericho, and you are listening to Houston Wrestling Radio, probably the best podcast in all of Texas, and probably the only one I've ever heard of. So crank it up and enjoy. To be the man, you got to be the Iron Man. And I am the Iron Man, and the biggest world heavyweight champion. And you're listening to Houston Wrestling Radio. This is WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, and you are listening to Houston Wrestling Radio. Arima! Hello and welcome everyone to the 55th edition of Houston Wrestling Radio. This is Abel. This is Travis. This is Chris. And hey, new music, guys. Yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah. Oh, so Man, got you all pumped up over here. Huh? That and the nerds. Well, yeah. Definitely. Four empty boxes of nerds. Now I'm ready to roll. Nerds the candy. Oh, God. Not... Nerds. Not nerds as in geeks. Right. Nerds yeah. the candy. Sugar Rush City over here. Yeah. Man. So, uh. I'll take I, this from you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's getting to Halloween, so all those little itty bitty mini candies. He literally yeah. ate all my Halloween candy I was going to give out. Yeah. Oof. Sorry. Sorry, best. We'll have, to bring, kids. we'll have to bring some more. Anyway, so yes, new music. Lots of thanks to uh, In Exile. You know, that's an awesome, awesome new EP that you guys uh, just released, and it's called uh, Sense of Self. Uh, that track that you just listened to was their opening track, and that's what we're using as our opening track, and that is entitled Relapse. Uh, so thanks so much, guys, for letting us uh, use your stuff, and anybody listening out there, if you dug it, uh, go check them out on Facebook and, you know, buy their EP. It's it's really good, you know. So, as you just heard. As you just heard. Hell indeed. yes. Yes, so thank you, thank you. All right, uh, let's see, what else we got going on here today? We, You know, we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah, we have a, a TNA pay-per-view to review and a WWE pay-per-view to preview. It's funny how they always work that out. Yeah, yeah. It's Makes just... it tough for us guys over here. <laughs> well, I don't know if this is the... This might be one of the few times that we've had a preview and a review in the same episode, isn't it? Yeah, close enough. <laughs> of this magnitude, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure of the... Um... Those Spike Special Edition pay-per-views. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. of. Yeah. The free pay-per-views that they would do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, TNA and the free pay-per-views. Uh, uh, those crazy kids. Uh, I know. Yeah. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about Bound for Glory. We're going to start off with that. All right. All right. Well, that was good. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> I three. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 but in all seriousness, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, first, I just kind of want to give a general overview. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't think it was that bad. People were crapping all over this pay-per-view. Before it even started. Before it even started. Forget Indeed. about the rest of the people. You gave it a 7 out of 10 before the show. Does it live up to your 7 out of I'm, 10? I'm sticking with that. Did it live up to your 6 out of 10? I think it exceeded it. I want to give it a 7. Okay. Um, Chris? I you had give it, it a lowest score. I have right? it a five. I had it a five out of ten. I think I'd give it a six and a half. Okay, okay that's fair. Yeah. Well, we're all yeah. close to about the same average there. So yeah. yeah, cool. My my overall opinion of the show was there was some good wrestling in there, but the booking and storylines amongst were, bad storylines. Yes, the the storylines or the booking is what killed this pay per view for me. Well, that's kind of a microcosm for the way TNA's been lately. Yeah, good wrestling to great wrestling paired with mediocre to okay storylines is, is that really something that we should hold tna uh, accountable for because you know if that's their biggest pay-per-view of the year wrestlemania's biggest pay-per-view of the year we almost have that same inclination of what's going to happen before it actually happens though yeah right? but that could be true for any pay-per-view though well no, it's, no i see what chris is saying yeah this you is... know because wrestlemania has already been built up with the royal rumble and like the undertaker streak match and all these other title matches uh, the, the 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 of course the john cena match so when you've got stuff that's already been built two and three months in advance, you kind of already see what's going to happen. So that's it kind of falls in the same context with the Bomb for Glory series and then some of the matches that were made for the pay-per-view. Yeah. So it, it falls back to that whole scenario where the booking, we kind of saw it coming even though it wasn't necessarily good or bad. Some yeah. of it might have been good, some of it might have been bad, but it didn't hinder a lot of the product we got because some of the matches on that show were really good. Yeah, there were. There, there were some matches that were really good and a couple of them that were surprising. Uh, you know what? L- let's, let's go ahead and... Are we done with the generalities and the overview? Shall let's we go start from the I don't start. know what generalities are, but yeah, we're, we're done with that part. So yeah, okay. let's, do you want to talk about the matches? Yeah. <laughs> How do <laughs> I have... No, those aren't the things that your underbridges protect, all right? With the what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, let, let's start off by talking a little bit about uh, the X Division title match, Ultimate X Match. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, you know, Ultimate X, I look forward to it. And I was thinking, you know, this was probably going to be one of the show stealer type matches. But uh-oh. it wasn't. Uh-oh. It wasn't really. It wasn't. It, it was a little bit too short, first off. I, I think it just ended too short. Yeah, right when you're starting to get into it, it ended. Yeah. And and then, man, Hardy just looked lost. Throughout the whole thing, yeah. He, you know, yeah. I, I don't know what happened with that. but It was his first ever Ultimate X. He might have been, just been out of place. Eh, no, I'm not buying Legitimately it. or storyline-wise, you think? Storyline-wise, I think. So you think he was booked to look a little the, bit incompetent? The problem nah. is the three-man Ultimate X, the four-man Ultimate X, that's perfect. I think adding too much, too many people in at once, I think Hardy was the odd man out. Like okay. Everybody else just fit in there. Like, if there would have been one per, le, per, less person, then Hardy would have had a lot more interaction between the other three guys for him to look a lot more credible in the ring as opposed to what we ended up with. I want to agree with that, but then again, at the same time, there was a spot where he climbed up one of the scaffoldings yeah. and just, did, like, just walked around the scaffolding and got back down again. Yeah, because <laughs> Austin Aries was kind of like, what are you doing up there? And yeah. he started kind of going after him, but Hardy, instead of, like... Trying to mount some sort of offense against him, or going faster up the up the scaffolding to get to the ropes, he just kind of went around the other side, climbed back down, and walked away. Yeah, like that was it. Just looked really off. It yeah, looked really weird. He was whiffing moves left and right. During yeah, the enough about Hardy. Yeah, okay. I damn near cried. Why? Because that match was just a huge reminder. Even if an arena is half full, Joe is so over uh, and so yeah. above all the talent in the X division. He well, needs to be back in that main event scene. Well, you know, they were in California. That's his hometown, pretty much. His Stomping grounds yeah, where so. he trains. Where he so that could have a factor to it, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, He gets that everywhere, though. We've been to shows. Yeah. They've been on the road. He gets that same reaction everywhere he goes. I, I will say that it was good to see old Joe. Yes. Yeah. He was inti- he brought the intensity, like. you know. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't Sofa Joe or Machete Joe. He looked like he old was school Samoa Joe. Joe gonna kill you, Joe. Yeah. All he needed was a little bead uh, sterling silver necklace and the towel, and that's it. Hell, if he would have yeah. started out with the haka. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> that would have been, that been it. Yeah. I, real, I just want to say, uh, as far as the Ultimate Ring match, it was just, uh, it was an average match. It wasn't anything special to me. Um, I didn't like the ending. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the. Um, you didn't like the ending. No. No, I didn't um, either. I, I thought uh, Manic. Uh, Ares, and what? who else did I say? Saban? Yeah. Those are the three... No, I'm sorry, not Saban. Um, Samoa yeah. Joe. Yeah, those were like the three... Standouts. Standouts for me for that match. I didn't I didn't, I didn't. dig the whole ladder used as the, as the end of the Yeah, match. I thought the whole point of Ultimate X initially was for them to have a unique match that is TNA's own, and, you know, the whole point was to not be a ladder match. You know, and then mm-hmm. this ladder got involved. Maybe it was because of Hardy. The yeah, I, think, got involved, I think so. But yeah, I don't know. It just seemed kind of against the whole purpose. Hardy pulled out the ladder to use it outside of the ring. Saban was the one that brought it in the ring. Did Saban it? was okay. the one that used um, Velvet as a distraction. Mm-hmm. That is for true. For a heel person to do that, for a heel person to take the easy way out and not monkey bar the ropes and just take a simple ladder and just cheat his way up to the top. That's why I like them. That's why I, I like the finish. The problem that I have. Is them whoring out the X, the Ultimate X match? Yeah, like you said, you love the match, but there was something about it that was just off. I'm sick and tired of them using that as an opening match. Yeah, you could use a knockouts match, you could use a tag match, you could have a comedy match, you could have any other thing. If you had that X division match right up in the middle of the card, it'd be make it'd it be, special. It'd be yeah. better placement, you know. Can, can I say something on top of that, just to add to that what you just said? Um, when, and I told you this yesterday, when Saban was coming out, uh, you know, Tanae was kind of hyping up his, his, um, experience in the Ultimate X match. <laughs> he says, Saban, you know, he's the most experienced of all these wrestlers. He's been in 16 Ultimate X matches. I was like, really? He's, he's, he by himself has been in 16 of these fucking matches? And he was out for like two years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That, I just, I just, I had to get that out there. So go ahead. What, that yeah. was it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if I really. It felt a little anticlimactic. The ending. Yeah. That, yeah. that's what bothered me about it. It didn't, it didn't bother me that he got the heel win by using Velvet and this and that. It just felt like it shouldn't have ended when it ended, and when it did, it just felt kind of like what? Oh, that's how it really finished. Like it, it just seemed abrupt, you know. Mm-hmm. And eh, as in, know. as an opening match is. 
Well, it shouldn't necessarily be that abrupt, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it left it left a little bit to be desired. But in the middle of all that, like you said, those other three guys did a really great job. You know, Aries, Joe, um, Manic, you know, they did a really great job. And the things that they did, their interactions they had uh, for it being Ultimate X, they were good. Yeah, kept you know? my attention through it. Yeah, it did. Yeah. So it's just kind of a, a strange beginning there with Hardy and then, you know, a strange ending and it was just too short. Yeah. So I want it more from the match. All right. Uh, let's move on. Let's see. What else was there? I don't think we're going in order here. We're just yeah, going. We don't, need, yeah, we don't need okay. to go in order. Uh, I'm going to pick something. Okay. I don't know if you guys saw it. Y'all might have fast forwarded through it. Or fell asleep through it. <laughs> I was a very big fan of the debut of Ethan Carter III. You were. This goes all the way back to how I was complaining that we need more jobbers back in wrestling. Yeah. More enhancement talent. Uh And that title lived up to it to a T. This guy, Norv Furman, who is in (laughs) Pro Wrestling Gorilla as like the sexier styling something. Like, I I don't know his real name, but he has a a gimmick that doesn't fit him at all at PWG. Okay. This dude's a a walking pipe cleaner. Has no business in the (laughs) ring whatsoever. Looks like a pile of crap. (laughs) He sold every single move that Ethan Carter made to make Ethan Carter look flawless. And that's what enhancement talent is supposed to do. Yeah. Not your mid-card guy, not your intercontinental champion jobbing out to somebody else in the middle of a tag match just for storyline's sake. Mm -hmm. In that 10 minutes of wrestling, 8 minutes of wrestling, whatever purpose Ethan Carter needed to have fulfilled, the jobber did everything that he was supposed to do to do it, and he did it successfully. And that's why I'm actually picking it as a match of the week candidate. Well, wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) Match of the league candidate, really? Yeah. Okay, hold on to yeah. that. Hold, no, no. Okay. Hold, hold on to that. Okay. We're going to talk about that later because uh, we're, we're going to talk Here, about that later. Here's my counterpoint to what you just said. Um, that I, I agree with enhancement talent. I don't agree with it being on the biggest pay-per-view of the year for TNA. Thank you. That should not have been on a pay-per-view. Yeah, I agree with that there. So do I. I mean, but once it's on there, what can you do? Okay. As far as it being match of the week, we'll get to that. We'll talk about matches of the week later, but we'll you're nominate. You're entitled to your opinion, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll nominate them as we go along, but then we'll talk about them together after we're done with TNA talk. But, um, you know, to Travis's point, yeah, this should have been on impact. Definitely. It didn't need to be on the pay per view. And, you know, you and I, Travis, we were talking about this when we were watching. Uh, <laughs> we kind of felt really silly. Kind of stupid, in fact. You mean uh, what I pointed out to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you? What, let's let's we'll say it and we'll see if Chris caught it too. You know, we we didn't really catch beforehand. Um, you know, on the Thursday before and leading up to the pay per view and all that, that he was Ethan Carter, <laughs> the third, as in Dixie Carter. Uh, you know, when when he walked up to Dixie and they had that little backstage. Oh, hey, well, you know, we're and, the Carters and Dixie, the world needs yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're like, oh, yeah, Carter, duh. Why didn't I see that from the get-go? <laughs> Guess like, I what? felt so stupid. Guess what? What? I didn't catch it either. <laughs> Hi, three. <laughs> Are we just that dumb? Is it, What happened there? Why, why Maybe didn't because... Apparently, during the Twitters of the week of leading up to the show, they had announced it because uh, Ethan Carter's Twitter was like, hey, th- I want to thank Aunt Dixie for giving me the opportunity. But I didn't catch it. I didn't pay that much attention. I didn't pay attention to it because the first week they started tell- promoting it, it was just Ethan. Yeah. Maybe that's why I kind of disconnected. Yeah. And that wasn't announced And then the next of- week, they started doing Ethan Carter the third, And before you could even pay attention to the word Carter, Carter to think about it, they changed it to EC3. Yeah. yeah. So they so it misled you, which for once they actually did what they were supposed to do. You know? yeah. If that is if, what they yeah. were supposed to do. <laughs> if they wanted us to get from the get-go that this was, yeah. you know... Carter, then, because I, I I can't imagine that WWE would have been able to do something like that. Like you know, here's Ethan McMahon the third, and us not catch it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, you know, somehow I think I'm thinking that's un- unintentional. Like I think they I just think it for- is too. I think they forgot to mention that. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I don't I'm, know. It's that was a weird. That's 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 my excuse for not catching it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. You know, Enough of that. Let's move on. Yeah. We'll talk about this more when we get to Match of the Week because okay. somebody had to nominate this yes. as Match of the Week. God match damn it, okay. Chris. Uh, well, let's talk to uh, talk about a legitimate Match of the Week that I think should be there. Uh, it was uh, the tag match with uh, the Bromans. The what? Yeah, yeah. With the Bromans versus uh, the Cowboys. Well, it's not like they beat him for the titles or anything. No, they did. The what? They beat him for the titles. Wow. Yeah, I, that was very surprising. No, weird. 
<laughs> yes, surprising and weird. You know, uh, but if you take away that, if you just look at the match, the match was good. The match was really good. I was really surprised. Really, really good. Yeah, Robbie E and, and Mr. Spectacular, they did. Don't comment. <laughs> well, Jesse, whatever his name is, Goddard, yeah. Uh, they did a really, really, really good job. And just that in and of itself, the fact that they were getting in offense, that they were able to actually look competent in the ring was surprising too because for the last, I don't know what, six months, they've been booked as fools, as jobbers, yeah. as people who can't buy a win, you know? And then all of a sudden, magically overnight, bam, they can. That was that. That surprised me. Now, it made for a good in-ring product, but then again, storyline-wise, like, how does that make sense? Why did all of a sudden, overnight, they they got good and good enough to win the tag team titles? Four corners match on the last episode of TNA where the winning team was able to be the last entrant into the into the gauntlet match. Yeah. Which um, the bromance member won. Mm-hmm. Um, the pre-show started off with the Mexicans and Bad Influence. Bad Influence eliminated the Mexicans. Yeah. The next team was EY and Joseph Park. Yeah. And surprisingly to me, EY and Park beat Bad Influence. Yes. And then Bromance came out before the match starts. Bromance jumped on a bit and jumped on Joseph Park and beat him up to the point that he was taken to the back. And it was them and EY. EY defending all by himself and he couldn't handle it and he lost. So that's how the Bromance ended up getting the title shot. Hmm. And, um, they just took the momentum and they kept going. Yeah. And it was, it was a darn good match. Like if you, if you hadn't watched TNA before last night, you would have thought that these guys had been legitimate contenders for the past, you know, six months, which is not the case. But, you know, kudos to them for putting on a good match. And here's another issue that shouldn't really be an issue unless you look at it the right way. Gunner and, and, and Storm, they yeah. were a really good tag team in that match. They, they were. had their own inventive spots. They had their own chemistry. They had their own thing going. But whose fault is it that we don't know about it? TNA. Yes. Because they always had their, they never booked them in, they didn't book them in enough tag matches on TNA Impact for us to get to know them or get to, get to like them as a tag team. We always had Storm in a singles match and then Gunner in another singles match. Well, in, in, in their defense, wasn't Storm injured there for a while? So he was kind of on light duty anyway, you know, so he, he wasn't able to wrestle all that much. I mean, was it, he? Wasn't that the case? I don't, if there was, there, I don't remember any kind of explanation storyline wise as to why they're not tag teaming. Yeah. Even in light duty, Gunner could take most of the beating and then Storm takes the yeah. hot tag, finish yeah. the match, and bada beam, you're done. Okay. Well, that was a good match. I nominate that as a match of the week candidate. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Okay. Um, shall we move on? Yes, go. Okay. Uh, you know, there was a knockouts match, the three way with the knockouts. Um, what is it, do we want to talk about that at all? Uh, I'm just sad that Lady Tapa was Gail Kim's second in command. You know, she yeah. would have been a good, a good, Un- unstoppable force awesome in, the, in the in the deep in the yeah. ex- in the knockouts division, and then her ending up just being J- Gail Kim's bodyguard. I'm sorry, we got that in WWE already. Yeah. Literally, that goes, yes. that goes back yeah. to that goes back to my point out that you don't have to do. You can follow old wrestling history, but you can't follow it if it's not history. If it's already being done right now, don't do it. Well, in TNA's defense, two weeks is history. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Um, yeah, I-, I think that this is a waste for Lady Tapa. Here's what's not a waste. Unless she's okay. using Gil Kim. Yeah, but I don't know if I don't know if that's going to be the case. Yeah, As not. of right now, it's just a bodyguard gimmick, right. which that's a waste for Lady Tapa. And so, and if you make her the bodyguard, she's effectively not a number another member of the Knockouts division, which is the whole reason why you brought her in the first place because your Knockouts division was thinning out drastically. Yeah, you know. So here's what wasn't a waste. Okay. What I thought would be the show stealer of the night, which was indefinitely Bobby Roode, Kurt Angle. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I agree with you. That's a match of the league candidate. We can nominate that. Travis, are you on board? Oh, absolutely. Okay. That was a good showcase for Bobby Roode. It was. It, it really was. I fell in love with the finish. I, we had never really? got that from Kurt Angle. Like, that's usually the move that Kurt Angle wins with. That's mm-hmm. never been the – this is the first time that's the move that Kurt Angle lost to. Like, pretty much the suicide bomb from Vegeta. He tried to do everything to take him out, and he wound up taking himself out in the process. <laughs> well, let's talk, let's talk about the finish. Uh, it's his return match, you know, on the biggest pay-per-view, mm-hmm. and he loses. Yeah, and not only did he lose his first match, you know, back, he he freaking knocked himself out and got put on a stretcher and was taken out of the arena. By the world's worst 
uh, emergency EMT team, whatever. <laughs> that's that's true. Yeah, that they were not very good at their jobs. <laughs> yeah, they probably got paid in fake hundred dollar bills. Yeah, maybe <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I I don't know. I was surprised by the ending. Well, while you say you were in love with it, I wasn't really in love with it because I I was more confused by it. Goes, it. it goes back to the booking. Yeah. You know, the match was great. It was stellar. We're going to talk right. about that in a little bit with the match of the week candidate. It, there was a lot of really great stuff that happened in it. But the, the booking, where does this leave Kurt? You know, he, he, oh yeah, another thing too, by the way. He said, nah, I don't want to be in the Hall of Fame, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said it just like that too. Yeah, that's, that's what he did. He, he did his best Robbie E impersonation. <laughs> Y'all didn't like that either? Yeah. If it had more of a we, direction and more of a point, I would have liked it a little we bit We weren't the only ones, man. Did you hear that response from the crowd? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. either no response or booze. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, Chris, you like that? Yeah. I like Why? That a lot. Defend yourself, sir. I mentioned it last show. Like, it's not... If Robbie Roode was winning the fight. Oh, with Kurt Angle, welcome back. Oh, it's his first match back. It's his fault he got into rehab for being a drunkie. That's you know? true. So why not just throw it out there? Hey, you know what? It's not. It's obvious. I've been in the news. I've been on the internet. I've done this. I've done this. I've, I've my last couple of years personally haven't lived up to the standards of a professional wrestler, let alone the. But that's that wasn't his exact words. He was more. He was more saying that it was like, oh well, I haven't done everything that I could do in this business. And Tanae was like, yes, you have. And Sting was like, yes, you have. And we well, were like, could have yes, done you a have. Lot more if he hadn't spent time away in jail. Or yeah, rehab. but that wasn't part of the storyline. That wasn't part of what he was saying there. I mean, that's behind the scenes stuff that we're not really supposed to know. He or just said he let everybody down. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that was necessarily what they were going towards. And the way Tanae was coloring it, it made it sound like he was thinking that he wants to win another fifteen titles and do this and that, and you know, do things. I wasn't that are... even listening to any of that. No, uh, <laughs> I, that I, the way he, the way his facial expressions and everything. What else would he mean? Well, you know, because the fact I mean, is that crowd knows what's going on. Maybe this if, isn't WWE where all the little nine and ten year olds don't know that it's fake. This is TNA. This is where the fourth wall is not only broken, but they put little goggles so that you can look into it. Yeah, they would know. Hey, Kurt Angle's been through some shit. Well, if that's what they're going for, then they could have upplayed it a little bit more. That's and then, TNA's fault. And that's then, the commentary's fault, yeah. which we'll we'll yeah. talk about later on. But. And then it would have been awesome, and then I would have been on the same page that you're at. We're saying, yeah. okay, yeah, he I let just, everybody down because of the rehab and the drinking and all. It's that. like they didn't want it. They're, it's like they wanted to talk about it, but they didn't want to mention it. You know, because they they Dixie mentioned it during during the the week after the live taping after Kurt Angle left when all the main main event mafia members were there. That yeah, he was she going came out some with personal him. issues. Yeah. Yeah. So I re- so when he said that, that's the first thing I remembered. Even storyline wise, mm-hmm. that's what I remember. The the interview that Dixie had with the rest of the mafia that, that Kurt was wasn't doing well and that he was getting that he was getting help, and that's what I meant. Like I didn't need to listen to Taz and and to Nate try to explain it because I already figured it out before either one of them opened his mouth. Yeah. That's what I got from it. Okay. Uh, all right. Of course, that doesn't I don't, explain... I don't think it was clear, though. It wasn't clear, yeah. 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 All right. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the actual in-ring of the match in a bit. So let's move on to something else. Um, hey, Abyss is back. Yay. You know what? When I saw that, I, I think I reacted just like that because um, I, I felt like a Daniel Bryan win the title. I couldn't get excited for it. Yeah. Because uh, didn't he come back at the last pay-per-view, and then he's gone by impact? <laughs> yeah, So, yeah. Uh, to me, I didn't really care. I, I want to be excited for this, yeah. and I want to say, yay, Abyss is back, this is awesome, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, it's just like D-Bry winning the title. It's like, okay, where's the screw job? Is he not going to be around for another six months? Wait, Are we going to not see him? Is it because of the Daniel Bryan screw job, or is it because they've screwed up enough with the Abyss character that I don't care anymore? They've screwed up enough with the Abyss character that I don't care I'm anymore. Using because the, I'm using Daniel Bryan as, as just an analogy, but it's because Because of the Daniel Bryan analogy doesn't really work because we're still caring about Daniel Bryan at least until Hell in a Cell. You guys sound like you're already gone from the Abyss character. So that analogy really doesn't work. Yeah, well, I'm not gone from the Abyss character completely. I want Abyss to be back. I want Abyss to be a character. What I'm gone from is the freaking Joseph Park character. I don't want Joseph Park around anymore. Please let him turn back into Abyss and let's have a top guy in there uh, doing what he can do. I feel like um, he, he's just wasting his talents, you yeah, know? I agree. And I think that, that, that says enough of that. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Let's move on. Uh, Sting and Magnus. Another weird booking. Yeah. It's one thing to pass the torch. I don't think I've ever seen Sting tap out before. Yeah. And also, it didn't seem like a hard tap out. It, yeah. it felt it felt like it was a soft tap out. Enough to the point that I think that where they're going with this is that somebody is going to say something to the effect of, well, you know, Sting just tapped out just so you could have the win. Mm-hmm. You know, that, like he did it out of pity. It was like, okay, well, let me give this guy the win. And that's going to cause even more friction and maybe even a heel turn for Magnus. Oh, I think the heel turn's already there. Yeah. Okay. I kind of figured, like... But we were talking about that last night, and I was you told me that, and I was thinking, bad influence. <laughs> I yes! Could, I could definitely see... Ba- Bad influence in the name itself. Bad influence <laughs> coming out, stirring up the pot, yeah. saying, well, you know, Magnus, yeah. the only reason why you won. Because mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's good for biz and this. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And they can use a third member. You mean fourth member. Well, because of ego. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they can use a fourth member. Why not? But yeah, yeah I definitely think that he'll turn was in effect. The way he just, like, not didn't acknowledge him at all. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a he's a sore loser, cocky winner. You know, yeah. it's, it's a heel right there. So. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think this match did uh, what it was advertised that it was going to do. That yeah. it was going to be a be-all, end-all for Magnus, and we're finally taking Magnus out to third base or whatever. That, that's not that's mm-hmm. not what's happening. They're still just kind of flirting with making Magnus a star. Here's, here's how I feel about it. I, I feel there's a little bit of irony in the fact that they were – Purposely booking this match to elevate Magnus, whereas off the pay per view, uh, Magnus didn't get elevated. I think uh, in a totally different match, Robert Roode got elevated. So they, yeah. that wasn't even part of their storyline at all. But yeah. to me, in my head, Roode in my head got got raised up a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. where Magnus, I, I, and I, that's yeah. another problem that I'm having right now with TNA. After AJ, who's the next face? Good question. I was thinking. That is a good question. I, think, I was thinking this would, if they would have not screwed up the booking, this would have been a perfect Joe? opportunity for Magnus to be to a new face oh, to okay. go up there to, with the mix. Because right now it's AJ, Aries, Joe, and after that and EY, there's really nothing new. There's really nothing that's happened that we haven't already seen before. Yeah. And the way that we're building up Magnus, even through this entire Bound for Glory series tournament, you know, he was looking like the next guy that could be the 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 the, the next. Torch carrier. I can't remember who said it. It was a few weeks ago where they, we someone said that we don't want this to be a, a Magnus turn. I didn't want it to be. That, that's probably okay. what I'm thinking of. Yeah. I didn't. And it looks like that's what we got. Yeah. So we're going to just get a whole lot more heels and there's not going to be any balance to it. Like, yeah. We're building up all these heels. What, what face are we building up? Yeah. What new face are we building up? You know, to an extent, Bad Influence has been around forever. But it's always been Christopher Daniels and Kaz. This whole bad influence package, it's brand new and it's got legs to run for mm-hmm. days. Yeah. And there's nothing to counterbalance that. Same thing with Rude. Rude got elevated to a whole new level. If Angles got, if, if Sting's already about to, about to retire, Kurt Angles doesn't have that much time left. We've already got rid of a, a bunch of other guys. Who's the next face to fill in the gap? Mm-hmm. You know, and I think they dropped the ball big time with Magnus because during the whole tournament, and even the build-up before Sting decided that he was going to pass the torch to him, he had really good flurries. His promos, man, how he got the crowd so hyped up. It's real easy, like watching old wrestling tapes, a flair. Like, he had he had it in him. And then TNA decided, whoop, we're going to just flip the script. We're going to make you a bad guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it does feel like, it, it, in hindsight, that it is a waste of all of the booking and all of the the making him look like he was the one that was going to win the uh, Bound for Glory series and all that. It, you know, maybe I wouldn't have so much of uh, beef with this if he came in second and him coming in second was a big deal. Instead of him coming in second was like a letdown. Yeah, you know, because yeah. he was like head and shoulders above the rest of the competition. There. And even then, last Thursday's impact building up to the pay per view where Magnus just let Bully and Dixie have it about how they had to work so yeah. hard for the to get in the tournament, and all of a sudden, the last minute, you want to just pay off somebody to just beat up AJ and to take the spot. Magnus's promo solidified it for me that he could be a really good face in that company. And then 48, 72 hours later, bam, heel. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Teeny booking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, last thing to talk about, uh, the main event. 
mm-hmm. AJ Styles versus uh, Bully Ray. And what turned out to be a you know another pretty good match. I don't ah, that sick table bump, man. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, that guy looked nasty. Ooh. Yeah, that springboard four fifty table. Bump. Ooh, uh, I'm not willing to to nominate this as a match of the week candidate. Uh, maybe because uh, you know I don't know. I I'm kind of on the fence, uh, but I'm leaning more towards not. What are you two guys feeling? Uh, you know what I I like I like the match. The right man won. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was okay, maybe not <laughs> in someone's opinion. It was entertaining from for AJ's, you know, what he was doing. Um, I'm on the fence. I guess I'm on the fence too, you know. But I'll say, yeah, sure, why not? I'll, I'll do it match of the week. You'll nominate, nominate it? It's okay. not my match of the week. Nominate it? You're gonna, we're going to nominate it where it's all plasticky? Yeah, da yeah. bears. Da. Yeah. <laughs> so, Chris, what do you think? I'm just like you guys. Like, I'm... I'm uh... <laughs> Almost the there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the stuff that Bully did taking off the mat, he hadn't poured that out. He's, yeah. he's only done it maybe once, twice. This is the third time he's done it. Third time. Yeah. But he hasn't done it all the time. <laughs> he hasn't done it all the time during his heel title ring. I just feel bad for freaking AJ having to do that sick looking mm. table spot yeah. in front of only about, what, a thousand fans on the biggest pay per view of the year? Yeah. Well, it was probably more fans, you know, watching the A thousand and one. Yeah. <laughs> well, three, because we all saw it one way or another. But, um,. It was a good match, but I think that was better on the card. Okay, and that just—I'll just stick to that. So, so is that a yay or a nay? Is nominating it as a match of the week? Nah, nay, nay, Travis. Uh, I'll nominate, but you already said two, two to one. So there you go. Well, if you're nominating it, put we'll, we'll we'll throw it on the list. Okay, we'll throw it on the list as a as a. Candidate. So let's round it out. What do we got for match of the week candidates for TNA? Well, uh, we have the bromance uh, versus uh, the Cowboys, and then we have uh, Kurt Angle versus Robert Roode, and then uh, Ethan versus the Jobber. Yes. Damn it. And, you then, then, yes. And, then, and then we have uh, AJ versus Bully. Okay. All right. So not bad for TNA. <laughs> not bad for hey. Well, four, three and a half. <laughs> yeah, three and a half. <laughs> well, Bastards. no, actually, because I think two of those are halves, so it's probably just three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, that's some that's some Steiner math right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so those are our match of the week candidates. But before we we say what is our match of the week, we have to throw in a couple of more because there was a, a couple others from WWE programming. Uh, the two that uh, we have here written down: uh, the six man tag from SmackDown. Uh, and then we also have the Usos versus the Real Americans from SmackDown. Wait, what? Two, two from SmackDown. Two from SmackDown and yeah. half from Raw? Yeah. WTF. Well, if you watch SmackDown every once in a while, Abel, you, you'd see. You. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, you know. Yeah, here we I, go. I missed this episode of SmackDown. <laughs> I did. But for good reason. We were at the uh, NWA Houston show. Oh, yeah, we were. Yeah, that was a damn good show. Well, you can hear about that on our, on our latest episode we just did. You know? On our yeah. special edition mm-hmm. Super Duper Origato episode. Yeah, mini but not really so mini episode. Uh, so mm-hmm. <laughs> it wound up being an hour and 40 minutes. Jeez. Uh, but it was really good. We got some uh, good interviews uh, out of it, and you know, we had some really great talking. We went down the card and talked about everything. It was, it was, it was great. So if you hadn't listened to that one, go go back and take a listen to that. Also, if you hadn't listened to our actual episode from last week, uh, go Yeah, we got to one of those, too. Yeah, yeah. You can hear our predictions from Down the Glory and see how we... How we did. Yeah, see what we're contradicting ourselves about, uh, you know, right mm-hmm. now. <laughs> okay, so, um, those are all of our matches of the week. So we have six. <laughs> Damn, we have six. Okay. Technically four, but whatever. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stein math. Six plus X equals shut up! <laughs> all right. <Yeah. laughs> do we, do we want to just go around the horn and say, what our pick is, and that's it, and, and then you know, talk a little bit about them or what? Travis, what's your pick? Okay, I guess we're going to do that. Travis, what's your pick? Why would you go to me first? <laughs> um, you know what? I'm going to say the uh, six man tag from uh, SmackDown. Okay, defend yourself. Uh, it was a good match. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great, deep analysis right there. Well, Thank it was you, sir. Either, oh, I don't know. It was between that one or Rude and Kurt Angle. Okay, no. I, I would say Rude and Kurt Angle, but I'm just on the fence about that ending. I, that could too much for that, that the ending of that match. Okay. What do you think, Chris? 
All right. Wow, so, that was quite the cop so out. Yeah, so y'all could beat the hell out of me for this. I'm sticking with Ethan versus Norv. Get the fuck out of here! I've already, I've already explained when we t- when, when we talked about that match why I like it. But here's the kicker okay. that you might respect. All right. You guys were really iffy about Bound for Glory because of all the storylines that have already been built up that you kind of already saw what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. This didn't have any of that. Right. So I went in. So you could go into this with an open mm-hmm. perspective and yeah. just enjoy the match for what it was mm-hmm. as a match. Yeah. It was really good. It was really? entertaining. I liked it. Yeah, keep making yeah. your faces. I don't care. That's my pitch. <laughs> this Ethan, isn't this isn't right back Kali, people. Ethan, this was actually good. Ethan versus a jobber. Yes. A rookie versus a jobber. Really? That's gonna be your match of the week. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you would I've seen everything else already from all your other match of the week candidates. Mm-hmm. This was different. This was good. It entertained me. Different doesn't necessarily mean that it was the best. I like. I. I mean, I, like I understand it. that the element of surprise is a big deal in yeah. wrestling. I get it. Yeah, and we weren't expecting it. Yeah, I understand that. But come on, you it's can't just a comment because apparently you didn't even watch it. You fast forwarded it. So your homework is to watch uh, the Abel, goddamn Abel. match. Let him. Let him. Let him have it. Let the yeah. baby have his bottle. Okay. Uh, well. <laughs> okay. Oh, jeez. All right. Uh, you know what I'm gonna go with. I'm going with the tag match from TNA, the tag title match, the Bromans versus the Cowboys. All right, I, that's I really liked it. And stealing a, a page out of Chris's book here, there was an element of surprise. I was surprised to see first off that they were the ones that were going to be in the match, the Bromans, and then I was surprised that they were actually allowed to be booked like competent wrestlers. Mm-hmm. And who to thunk it? They are competent wrestlers. You wouldn't have known that. And they were actually doing some really cool things in the ring. They were holding their opponents basically to little to no offense, which considering who they were fighting, you know, Gunner and James Storm, they're really high up on the card and have been established to be really high up on the card. Yeah. So that just made it even more su- surprising and drew me in a little bit more. Um, but, you know, I kind of want to say a few things about a, a couple of the other matches. Yeah. Um, well, real quick before okay. you do that, I, I just since since you're you're picking TNA matches, I, I'll I'll go ahead and solidify my my response. I am gonna pick uh, Angle versus Rude as my match of the week candidate. Ending be damned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, because actually, what you said um, about the ending, it, came, it kind of made me like double think. Uh, you know, it put over Rude. It did. So, yeah. Once, oh, go ahead. Hats off to uh, the bromance and their their protein shake oh, celebration. Yes. that was freaking priceless. Was that really protein? Either? I don't care <laughs> what it was. That Abraham Washington ripoff guy announcer dude sold it and it was slipping like a million bucks. You mean uh, Jefferson Franklin? Whoever that is. <laughs> <laughs> that segment was hilarious. That was hilarious. You know, one thing I want to highlight from Kurt, Kurt Angle versus Robert Roode is the counter from the ankle lock into the crossface into the ankle lock. Yeah. Holy crap, I have never seen that before. Yeah. That was really cool. And, I, you know, that almost made me want to say that that was the match of the week, that that was my pick. But I couldn't really get over to the ending because it just left so much of a question mark on there. I think they were going for, you know, Bret Hart versus Stone Cold, Stone Cold passing out from the pain type of thing. But I don't know if that it came out even, quite I think as... that's what kept me from making it a match of the week candidate was because, um, or uh, my pick for it was because the way that Bobby Roode is going to just fade out into the ankle lock, that would have been a perfect time to, for that match to end. Mm. And then when Earl Hebner raised his hand to check if he was all right, and then he reached the rope, yeah. that was ingenious. I'd it never was. seen that it before was either. And then maybe one or two moves later, and that should have ended the match. I think after that moment, the match went a little bit, just a little bit longer than it could have. Yeah. To where by the time that finish came out, you might have been surprised that it happened. Mm-hmm. And for me, that's, that's probably... That spot where the referee me. raised his hand. And the camera angle, and I think the, the fans caught this too, that was there in the arena. It looked like the referee just put his hand on the rope. Yeah. <laughs> because everybody, as soon as that happened, people started chanting bullshit. I, I think that was the effect that they were going for. I think you that think was engineered. The, you think that was in, engineered for the... It no. looked like the referee... Put his hand on the not, not not insinuating that there was a screw job, but like the ref was, you know, checking his hand to see if you know he'll, he'll drop it, and then it was the ref's fault 
not by on purpose because there's foul play involved, but just because due to the ref's incompetence or whatever, <laughs> it's like, oh, what? Oops, I dropped his hand on the rope. You know, what do I do in that situation? Like, I, I liked it. Yeah. I liked that a little bit because, you know, it was genius and something I haven't seen before, and it was a great technicality. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't think they were going with a ref screw job type of angle. I think it was like, oh, the ref screwed up type of angle. <laughs> it is it is Hebner. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I would like – I almost gave that match of the week, but just the, the surprisingness of that tag match. And, you know, not to say that the Usos uh, versus the Real Americans wasn't a good uh, tag match either. You know, that, that one was – that was pretty darn good too. I saw a little bit of it, but you know, you, you tell me the rest. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hell in a Cell. Okay, hey, yeah, let's talk about WWE for this week, and by doing so, we are going to be talking about the pay per view. We're going to preview it, and I guess we could go down the card and talk yeah. about what came up uh, in this building up to uh, Hell in a Cell. So this is going to be lovely because we're starting from the bottom, and right from the get go, we have so- we have a lot to talk about. Yes, uh, we do. Intercontinental title match for the pre-show. Curtis Axel, everybody's favorite boring man, will defend the title <laughs> against Biggie Langston. He needs five. I I hope uh, Axel liked his title ring. <laughs> so, of course, it could be a screw job somewhere in there. He retains, but well, anytime that you have a Heyman guy involved, it, there's always a yeah. potential for there to be some sort of screw job. Because I do not like Axel's chances at all, one on one against Biggie Langston. Yeah, one on one in a fair fight, uh, storyline wise, I think right now, especially with the the way Curtis Axel's stock is dropping and Biggie's stock is going up, I would like to think that uh, Biggie would come out with the title. But again, you know, y- you never really know with a Heyman guy. But uh, I am. One hundred and fifty percent down with Big E's face turn. Is that, I because, am, is that because of Raw? Because of Raw, because of uh, SmackDown, and just because I've been wanting this dude to be a face because of his damn Twitter. <laughs> this guy is so freaking funny. He's just out there, out outside the box, man. And you know, I just want to see more of him, and I want to see what he could do as a face, and what he could do as a character, and how he could grow. I, I think there's a lot of potential there for Big E, and. Uh, you know, I hope that this is... If a face Big E was a drug, I got hooked on it on Monday. Okay. He stood up to Ryback. Yeah, he did. And he hung in there with Ryback. And Curtis and Axel Curtis at the same Axel time. at the same time. And he was winning over the crowd as every hit kept going. Yes, that brawl. That brawl was so good, but also it was so instrumental in putting Big E over and solidifying him, let alone the match after, you know, with the, the tag with Punk and everything, and letting Big E get the win, you know, while Punk this, is in the ring. This, like, this, does, is... this does so many things. It First of all, um, for the storyline purposes, we've been saying that CM Punk needs someone else yeah. to go along with him. This is, this is the other person. Secondly, it's made Big E look like a million bucks coming out of this uh, announcement. And... Not I really don't even care about when he beats Axel <laughs> for the title. I want to see Big E versus Ryback. Yeah. That's what I want to see. Yeah. The segment of the week? Segment of the week, I would say. Yeah, if you include the brawl, the the promo, the match, everything all included in one big lump sum, yeah, segment of the week. Why not? And then it was no time booking that IC title match right after that. Yes. Is it too soon for us to put our wrestling hats on and already call that Big E is going to turn on Punk and become the new Paul Heyman guy and get rid of boring Axel? No. No, I, I don't see that going there. I don't see why they would do a, a full-fledged face turn and put as much into it as they did on Raw for it to be just like a ha-ha screw job, I'm a, I'm a Paul Heyman guy. I don't see that you coming. Think I think this is legit. Because this only happened Friday on SmackDown during the Punk match and then Monday on Raw. This hasn't been like a two- or three-month face build. That's true, but... Like I said, they put a lot into it on Raw. They had him get a high profile win. They had him fight alongside of one of the top guys. Well, being wait a minute now. Now that you're saying that, Chris, I don't know. I could definitely, you know, we've seen Paul Heyman's frustration with Curtis Axel. He's not getting the job done. I could definitely see uh, Biggie. Him planning Biggie before all this even started. Exactly. Saying, him beating the crap up. out of Axel, getting the title, and then uh, Raw the next night. Even uh, in Hell in a Cell. Even in Hell in a Cell, Paul Heyman says, you're out. You're know, whatever. What do they do? You know? And then Raw, uh, maybe, well, they can do it both on Raw. They can have a tag team match. They can get rid of Axel during the tag team match and then turn on CM Punk at the same time. Bam. There you go. Yeah. And then now 
Uh, Heyman's got two big powerhouses. Now Punk has a new powerhouse to feud with because he's already gone through Lesnar. He's already gone through Axel. Now he's about to go finish off Ryback already. Because if we've already gotten Punk right back for two pay-per-views, I don't see this lasting towards Royal Rumble. We still got Survivor Series Hell in a Cell. Mm. This would be the next new fresh face for Punk to, to feud with if it's, they pull the trigger that quick and just decide to and have if that they, happen. And if they did do the heel turn for like where he becomes a Paul Heyman guy, it could go maybe uh, two or three months. Um, maybe Heyman treat him like shit or whatever, and then he then he turns. He's the one that turns on them before they turn on him. Yeah. Okay, you know what? All that sounds good. And that's some good booking right there. I think if that were to happen, I'd be happy with it. Uh, I just don't think that is what the case is. I'll be happy either way because yeah, I yeah. like what I saw on Monday. Yeah, I, I, a lot. It, indeed, exactly. Um, all that being said, predictions. Who's going to win this match? Fuck this, man. Come on. <laughs> Do you have to ask? Do, yeah, it's Biggie. Biggie's winning. Biggie. Curtis Axel. If Big e, if Axel wins, I'm rioting. I'm breaking somebody's fucking TV. Okay, well we're not watching it at my place. <laughs> or my place. We're watching it at Aaron's place. <laughs> so you better have gotten that protection plan from Best Buy or something. <laughs> I, I don't know if WWE is going to pull the trigger on it. And like I said, you can never tell with a with a Paul Heyman guy. Uh, so I'm I'm a I'm gonna go with Curtis, especially because it's on the pre-show. If this was on the main show, on the actual pay-per-view, then I would see, like, I could see that happening where a title change actually they, happens. That's how Cesaro won the U.S. title. On that's a true, but that was when they were really trying to get the pre-show up and running, and, you know, they really He's wanted his mind already. Yeah. Okay, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you guys. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. We have a Divas Championship match with AJ Lee versus Brie Bella. You know, on Raw... Brie really impressed me. She's been training with d Apparently. You know, and... She uh, has more of the fire out of the two Bellas. She does. She I'm does. Not, I, I just like her more than Nikki. I don't Is know it why. because of the show? You got to know the flat-chested one and you're starting to get ties with her. You feel for her? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is her time. She's winning the belt. That's it. You think so? Yeah, she's winning it. Well, I don't know. She's had two wins over AJ, uh, SmackDown and Raw. Yeah. So that leads me to believe that AJ's going <laughs> to win. That's your formula. That's your formula. <laughs> well, not always. Well, we still have main event in SmackDown if they pull something. That's true. So that's true. I'm I'm going with uh, with Bella. I'm gonna go with AJ. I've been saying whoever AJ's been fighting the last couple pay per views, that person's winning. So now I'm just gonna say AJ. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, Moving on. Maybe that will reverse the uh, the the polarity, the, the, the mojo there. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got a tag team championship triple threat match between uh, the Rhodes brothers versus the Shield <sighs> versus the Usos. This is gonna be a match of the night. I, I have a feeling it has the potential to be a match of the night. I think so. I think you're right. And I don't know who's gonna win. Usos are on fire. You know, of course the Rhodes brothers are on fire, and then you know the Shield's the Shield. So hey. I I, I want to go ahead and say my prediction. I think the roads are going to retain. I think so too. The roads are going to retain. Chris, it's a hard one. Yeah, the Usos, who's been fighting to get a title shot, well, ever since they lost the last one, you know, they're still considered number one contender. So they're still getting wins. They're still getting their momentum. I'm leaning towards the roads too. Yeah, yeah. I I don't see them taking the title off the Rhodes brothers so quickly. Like it hasn't even been a full month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, so you don't want to seem like a fluke or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, especially after they remix their music and gave them like a team entrance music. I mean, jeez. <laughs> Man, we we ran that what two or three times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, Travis and I were watching it together, and when that first happened, we we're like, "Oh my god, this is so cool!" And uh, we, we thought it was awesome. We listened to it a couple of times, and then uh, Travis calls you know his wife Nancy over and says, hey, "Nancy, listen to this," and we play it for her, and she's like. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> that's my feeling exactly. <laughs> it needs to grow on me a little. I think, okay. I think that's it. I, I marked out for it hard. <laughs> Big baby. I know. Next. All right, next. Wow, we're, we're just rushing on through this. Okay. Uh, handicap Hell in the Cell match. CM Punk versus Ryback and Paul Heyman. There's, there's so much that could go on in this match as far as what, pay, what Heyman has up his sleeve. Mm-hmm. It's a hard one to call. It has... Punk been winning his pay per view matches. No, <laughs> um, this has to be uh, his comeuppance. I'm going for Punk. Okay. Yeah, I think Kamen's like too cocky now. Yeah, 
Especially with that lava flow, uh, <laughs> ultimate warrior promo that he pulled. Oh my god. Somebody's been watching a little bit too much of the old Hellwig, uh. <laughs> I was curious what Ryback was looking at, cause the entire time he just had this stone face, like he was dreaming about unicorns and rainbows, just staring off into the distance. Like you can see the space between his face. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think maybe he was stone faced because he was trying so hard not to laugh at all the crap. I, that he was probably doing. was yeah. it too, cause yeah. I was laughing, I was like, dude. Breathe. <laughs> well, even did you see Axel's face beyond Heyman whenever he was going off? Yeah, Axel's even like, Axel's like, what the hell? It's <laughs> like, I'm glad I'm leaving this deep soon. <laughs> All right. I've got Punk. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say Punk. I, I think, yeah, he's. The, the bad guys are getting too cocky you now. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I, I, I would want to lean towards saying Punk also. And in fact, I think I will say Punk, but I have a suspicion that since Heyman's involved, there's definitely going to be some sort of shenanigans something that's going to happen that's going to make this kind of go the opposite direction you know Heyman's Heyman does not not have a plan you know it's Paul Heyman he has plans but they all normally get backfired on not all the on time on television yeah not on yeah. yeah not all the time so I, I can't I can't foresee that there's not going to be the unforeseen if that makes sense no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. But my, my official pick is Punk, but if I'm wrong on that, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. All right. World Heavyweight Championship match. Alberto Del Rio versus John Cena. Right. I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Um, there. As a human being, Cena has a huge set to be doing what he's doing this close. You know, you see the, the video recaps and everything. Mm-hmm. But the way they, 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 they've just been building him up for this match, I don't like him because I can't relate to him. Okay. So in that sense of the word... Why can't you relate to him? I don't know. I just can't. Like I, I just can't get into... I mean, I don't know. Okay. I just... The World Heavyweight title situation is so far gone... You this, know, you put Brian against Del Rio, and guess what? I probably wouldn't care either because Del Rio's already crapped on the world title so much that it's already rusting. Like, I don't <laughs> care anymore. Like, really. Because what you just said, I actually kind of wanting Cena to win. Just because it will elevate the World Heavyweight title again. Yeah. I, I'm, It'll do something to the World Heavyweight picture in general. In, in, yeah, exactly. It's going to create a little bit of controversy, create a little bit of buzz. Uh, so I, I want Cena to win. I want Cena to beat Del Rio. And... Somebody, you know, slap me because I can't believe I'm saying I want Cena. To- oh, fuck. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, he said that because Travis faked it and I literally hit him. <laughs> yeah, you did, you bastard. <laughs> Just my mom's dead, not my dad. Hey. Jeez. Have some emotion. Uh. Just a bruise. I've done worse to you. And you weren't complaining. <laughs> Just wait till I break out Zeb Coulter's bullwhip on you and we'll see if you're still complaining. <laughs> How about that? Indiana Coulter and the Real Americans. I... <laughs> Shut up, Chris. Damn it. Where's Jasper when you need him? Hey. Okay. No, where's the hammer? Because if Jasper was here, I'd tell him off. Oh, really? That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, I hope you're listening out there so you can hear all this stuff he's saying about you. Okay. Anyway, uh, I want Cena to win. And I'm surprised that I'm saying that because usually my mantra has been anybody but Cena. But apparently Alberto Del Rio has been able to. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the one that has been able to. Maybe maybe that's been WWE's plan all along. Get everybody to hate Alberto Del Rio so much that it'll even get Cena over. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm going to be a fan of Cena. I'm just saying that I want Cena to win the title. Uh, you know, away from Del Rio because it'll do something with the World Heavyweight Championship. I just hope with Cena winning the World Heavyweight title, it's not going to overshadow the WWE picture, the the WWE title picture. I hope you're right. It's a possibility because it's Cena. Yeah. And it wouldn't be the first time that the World Heavyweight title was the feature title. Yeah. You know, there was a time time when the WWE title was just the secondary title on SmackDown. Yeah. So hopefully we won't get a repeat of that. Yeah, hopefully not. But okay, let's let's move on. Uh, let's see, we have uh, WWE Championship match, uh, Hell in a Cell, with special guest referee Shawn Michaels, Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton. 
Nice. There's a really big variable in this in this match. Yes, and, and it's it spelled H B K. They were playing to me. They were playing the fans both ways on Raw. Yeah, like they were saying, okay, he's definitely siding with with Debray. Oh wait, he's also siding with um, Triple H. Yeah. I you know I don't know, man. It, it... He all but said he's going to do his best for business. Yeah, <laughs> and then again, he was standing up for Debray. So. Man, I don't know. That's really hard to 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 pick whether or not uh, HBK is going to screw over Orton or screw over you know Daniel Bryan. I don't That's really know. That's my problem. He doesn't need to be there to screw anybody. Yeah. This should be a definitive win. Right. Yeah. They they play this game long from enough. There. Yeah. yeah. Especially since it's Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell traditionally should have a definitive winner. It should. You know, of course, there's all the great examples of when there aren't definitive winners and this and that. Whatever. You mean the very first one when Kane debuted? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, that's what I'm talking about. But concept-wise, this should be a match that ends stuff. But, you know, when you're throwing HBK in the mix, when was the last time HBK has been a special guest referee and he didn't screw somebody over? WrestleMania. He didn't screw somebody over at WrestleMania? He, he kicked Triple H by accident and then he super kicked Taker on purpose. Yeah, see, that's the thing. He was attempting to. He was attempting to get involved. He attempted yeah. to do stuff. He, you know, so I guess maybe the question is, when's the last time that, you know, he's not attempted to screw somebody when he's been completely 100% impartial as a special, special guest referee? Can't recall. There yeah. you go. Didn't he cost the Undertaker his title run at Heart and Soul when he defend when Undertaker versus Bret Hart? Mm-hmm. He was a, yeah, yeah. That's how far back all that crap goes. And I didn't think that you needed to put all that into a title match already in the Hell in the Cell. Yeah, I mean you already have the gimmick of it being in the cell. You don't need another gimmick for you know having a special guest ref. So you know this maybe makes they us... were maybe they were thinking that with the Debray and Orton again, even though it's Hell in a Cell. Maybe they had to have that extra little spice of, you know... HBK? Yeah. Eh. To get extra buys. Oh, okay. Maybe. Hopefully that's all it is and it's not going to be... My prediction is I just want somebody to leave with the title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because if they pull this... And crap, not get returned on Monday. If this gets pulled one more time with the, the, the titles in a van down by the river, I'm out. <laughs> Literally. And this is with Daniel Bryan in there. I'm out. Yeah. I was almost how, out last time it happened. How would you feel if Orton won? Because we're all wanting Debry to be the one with it. If Orton wins, then let the booking speak for itself and see where it goes. But if they hold, if they keep holding it off and holding it off, at some point I'm just going to be done, and I'm like, right, I'm, I've got a foot out the door already. Okay. So if they, if they, if, if there's no definitive clear cut winner and nobody leaves with the title again, I'm out the door. So for you, the order of preference is Debry winning, Orton winning. No uh, definitive winner at all. That's yeah. that's the order. Okay. Trav, what do you think? You know what? I'll say Debray. I'll say he's going to win. Okay. That, so you're predicting Debray win. Yeah. Well, what, what, well, Chris, what were you predicting was going to happen? I don't have a preference of what you're asking. I know what you're asking, but okay. I, I don't have a preference. I'm the same way. I don't have a preference either as long as there is a winner. Okay. It, yeah, that's all there is to so it. Who, oh, yeah, but, but who, who do you? What's think your prediction? What's your prediction? I'm going Orton. All right. Uh, you know, I kind of want to agree with you. I think I want to go with Orton. I think Orton's going to win it, and it's going to kind of screw up everything. All the momentum with Brian, you know, <laughs> and I, I don't know why WWE would want to do that. Other than the fact that, you know, it seems as though they've been having this track record of not really realizing what they got with Debray. And I don't know if that's just storyline or if it's just, you know, uh, uh, what WWE has led us to believe. Cause like I said, the WWE knows how to work the IWC and maybe they just have me convinced, but I don't know. I think they're really just going to go with Orton and it's going to kind of, that's going to be the last little bit of air that they're going to let out of this balloon. You know, that, that could be the greatness of, you know, the fall of Debry. There could be one thing that might happen that's even worse than that. What's that? If this entire time that Orton's been scaring Brie Bella, who's been with Brie Bella this entire time? Debry? No. Oh. Nikki. 
Oh. And they suddenly insert Cena into all this mess. Brian beats Orton. Orton starts feuding with Cena because Cena wants to suddenly stand up for his girlfriend while he's been injured. Or somehow they just throw Cena into this whole mess. You know, I don't remember where I saw this. Um, I, I think it was somewhere online. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. But uh, somebody was doing a little conspiracy theory of Cena winning the World Heavyweight, Orton winning the WWE, and then that's going to lead to a unification between the two of them. A unification title match between the two of them. WWE's wanting to do that for eons, and they still haven't pulled the trigger. I don't know. It it, it could be a bit of a perfect storm of brewing for that. And I don't know if I want to see that happen. As far as, like, Cena versus Orton. Uh, as far as you can find unif- unifying the titles, I don't mind that. Yeah, Cena Bryan would be a perfect follow-up. From SummerSlam, yeah. yeah. You know what? That would be good if if you know they could still do that. I guess if if uh, Brian winds up winning the title, then we have Brian Cena to unify the titles. I I like that infinitely better than Orton versus Cena to unify the titles. Yeah, I agree. I concur. All right. So that was the whole card already. That was the whole card. Unless there's going to be something else added uh, on SmackDown or something. Since I'm the only one with the ability to understand Spanish. See. And the only person that has the ability to understand Bull. Oh. From the promo in the little in the little vignette that El Torito had yeah. on Raw, he mentioned something about this Sunday. Yes, he so did. So we might end up getting a Matadores versus Real Americans match inserted in there somehow. That'd be really cool. That'd be a great feud starter. Because after all, Zip Coulter, oh my god, he was really... Dude, Zip Coulter on commentary was freaking gold. Did get you hear, of, did get you hear of, on SmackDown's commentary? No. Man. If it was just as good, fuck it. Buy Cole, buy Lawler. Just put Jay, just put <laughs> Layfield and, and Zeb Coulter. Lay, Layfield looked like he was having a blast. <laughs> and Cole couldn't even hide it. Yeah. yeah. Like they zoomed in on the commentary. Cole had to put his head down so, so you couldn't see him laugh. Yeah. Priceless. Well, hopefully that does get added to the card. You know, that'd be a nice little uh, surprise addition there. And I've, I've been really high on Los Matadores. You know, they're in ring anyway. And, you know, the, the, uh, from bell to bell, everything else yeah. after that. Yeah. Before and after, I'm not sure. I mean, they, they need to, to, to shorten the time of that entrance that they do. Except Friday on SmackDown where Zeb got gored. Yeah. Yes. And then butt gored. Yes. <laughs> that was Abel's favorite part. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> she was kind of jealous, I heard. <laughs> Screw you guys. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Trav, you have any closing remarks? Grade it on a scale of one to ten. Grade what? The pay per view. Your expectation Your, for Hell oh. so. Whew, Uh Let's see. It sh- they have some potential for some really good uh, matches and storylines coming out of this. So, um, I'll stick with my seven. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna upgrade to seven. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is going to be a 7. There's going to be some low points, but there's going to be some high points. Enough for it to get a passing grade. Yep. Chris? I might actually do... 8? Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. All right. Well, we'll have to revisit that whenever... I'm in the same boat now that you talked about it a little more. I think I, I kind of... I kind of want to think that time when... I kind of want Cena to win. Okay. And we might get a, a couple of surprises in some of those matches, so I'm going with eight. All right, there we Hopefully go. Hopefully I don't get let down. Yeah, I, I hope so too. Uh, you know, where's Ziggler on this card? Now he's not even on the pre-show. Nope. My, my, my. That is quite disappointing now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Especially after Ziggler had a pretty decent match with uh, Orton this on this past week of Raw. And that was almost, almost a match of the week candidate. I mean, shit, we had six, so I don't want to throw another one on there. Uh, but it, it was, it was almost good enough. I, I don't know why. I don't know what it lacked. Uh, maybe it was just the fact that I kind of knew Ziggler was going to lose. Yeah. Especially, like, you know, Ziggler made his interest. Like, hey, check it out. Ziggler's finally back on Raw. And then Orton made his interest. Is like, oh, well, so much for that. <laughs> you All know? Right, two questions. Number one. Somebody came back on the on the house show tour. Yeah. Odds of Wade Barrett showing up on the pay-per-view. Slim. That's, yeah, that's a more of a raw thing, I think. Okay. 
How about Ray Mastrio? Slim. Really? Yeah, I don't think either one no. of them are going to show up on the pay-per-view. If they do, that, or, I mean, if they do, it'll be surprising. But I think we'll see them back on Raw. Well, wait a minute. Uh, they, do they still do the little, uh, um, like sports booth commentating thing where they talk oh, about the yes. matches? On the pre-show? That could be, well, they, they do it throughout the whole pay-per-view, but, yeah. um, something like that. But that's probably what you're talking about. You're probably talking that about that too. Doesn't yeah. matter. Just to have their face back on television or mask back on television, <laughs> depending on your preference. Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe. But I don't. I don't think it'll happen. But okay. But yeah, I, I think their chances of showing up on the pay per view are slim. Where you know, if that were to happen, that would be almost TNA ish type booking. Just kind of random out of nowhere, boom! They just put them for a return unadvertised. Like that doesn't make sense. WWE doesn't do that a whole lot. I mean, every now and again they'll do something crazy like that, but mm, I don't. They do that. debuts on pay per views sometimes. Right. Yeah, but they'll hype it. They'll let you know. You know, they won't just surprise. Say, hey, here's this guy that's returning. One more. Okay. We haven't mentioned it yet. Okay. Is this the pay per view Sandow cashes in? Ooh. Get Cena if he wins. Um. You know what? Hold on, Chris. Do you still have that up on your on your phone there? Was that a was that match a Hell in a Cell match? No, no, it's not. It's not a Hell in a Cell match. No. Then no, Sandow does not cash in. If it was a Hell in a Cell match, then maybe because that way you know whoever is the winner is so beat up and blah blah blah. But if it's just a regular one on one with Cena, I think Cena can handily beat Del Rio. I don't foresee. Cena squeaking out the win, but still being incapacitated to the point that somebody could pull a cash in on him. So no, I I don't think we're gonna see a standout cash in. No, no, I'm wrong, or no, it won't happen. That one. So <laughs> you know, I was just thinking about this. You know, uh, Cena, he had the uh, the surgery. Yeah. On his uh, left arm. Mm-hmm. And Alberto Del Rio's finisher, armbar. On the left or, arm. Yeah. yeah. Cross break, whatever. Um, whatever it's called. I don't know. Yeah, the armbar. Anyway, um, so do you think that could uh, be a factor in maybe a surprise uh, victory over Cena? Maybe. Maybe Cena did come back too soon? Maybe, but I mean, this is WWE and this is Cena. And you know how much Vince loves him, his Cena. It's really hard to bet against Cena. Really hard. Yeah. So maybe that's why you should. <laughs> ah, Don West over here trying yeah. to sell it. <laughs> Speaking of Don West trying to sell it, our <laughs> truth doing his best Don, Don West impersonation and reminding me why I hated that guy in the first place. Oh my god, that was so ridiculous. Why? 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 Maybe their sales were low on WDBShop.com. I, <laughs> I don't know. I guess our truth needed something to do, and he went up to Creative and go, hey, you know, it'd be funny. You know, and, and I, I don't know. Like it's Creative a, listens to our truth. Yeah, yeah it really yeah. sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It was it was ridiculous. It was a train wreck, and uh, I hope that never happens again. I was more confused than anything. I didn't know what was going on. Really? <laughs> Loud noises were confusing you? Yeah. Yeah. Chris. Going ham on the piggy bank. Yeah. <laughs> Priceless. <laughs> if you don't know the term, Google it. Wow. Abel, do you know what the term means? I don't even want to know. Trav, Whitey, do you know what the term means? Um, I do, but I want you to tell it. <laughs> that means That's he doesn't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Jay-Z Kanye reference. Oh, is it? To a song called Ham, Hard Ass Motherfucker. Uh. Yeah, yeah, chicken, chicken. I don't know. So what else have we got? Is that uh, it? That's it for uh, WWE Talk, unless there's anything else either one of you guys want to add on. You got anything, Chris? Nah. Nah? All right, let's start wrapping the show up uh, so we can get out of here. Um, let's see, what do we got? All right, we already mentioned the uh, NWA show. Go back and you know listen to that. Also, again, another big thanks to uh, In, In Exile, a local Houston band here. They got their uh, first EP out. It's called Sense of Self, so check them out on Facebook. That's uh, In Exile. Uh, it's I-N-E-X-I-L-E. 
Exactly. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we mentioned him a little bit last week. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can actually get through the plug this week without me screwing up. <laughs> it's, well, uh, there's no guarantee on that one. Right. Uh, Wrestling Collectors Outlet. Uh, Basically, they have a little shop where they sell everything, everything, everything uh, that is related to wrestling. Uh, they have figures, magazines, autographs, uh, DVDs, T-shirts, uh, posters, all kinds of stuff. So if you want to go check them out, please do so. Uh, the address of their shop is 7355 Highway 6 South. And, uh, you could also check them out on Facebook, uh, at wrestling collector or facebook.com slash wrestling collectors outlets 713. Did a better job than last week. Yeah, I did. Four eyes. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I put it here on my phone instead of the computer screen, which is all the way over there. My phone's right here. All the, the way palm, over here. <laughs> yeah. In the palm of my hand so I could read it better. You know, the address, you know. Man, I'm telling you, the three of us have glasses. You can't see. I can't read. And Travis doesn't have a polite bone in his body to even help you. I know. Fuck. Well, we are getting old. You guys. <laughs> I'm feeling freaking phenomenal. Phenomenal. No I <laughs> this is why I don't sing. Okay, uh, I'm you sorry. You shouldn't either, apparently. <laughs> I'm sorry, or listeners. Or dance. <laughs> right, yes. Dance. Fandango. All right. Uh... <laughs> no, not yet. We're not done with the show yet. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Travis, you got a little shout out you want to do, right? About this weekend. Yes. 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 Shout into the microphone right there. Don't tell me what to do. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this weekend, it's not in Houston, but it is in San Antonio, not a far drive from here. That's why know. they call it Alamo City Comic Con. Ah, yes. Alamo City Comic Con. Uh, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, the reason we're talking about a Comic Con here on our show is that there's gonna, they're gonna have wrestlers there. Um, some of the ones, uh, that, uh, you may have missed, uh, in Clutch City, uh, came up here a couple months ago. They had, uh, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Xbox, they all are here. Um, well, they're gonna be back in Texas, in San Antonio this weekend. They're um, back. Good poultry guys for Halloween reference. Right. Very good, yes. Yeah. You weren't going for that, but it's okay. Um, was. Along with uh, Nash Hall and X-Pac, uh, now they're going to have Bret Hart. That's a treat by itself right there. Yes, it is. My favorite wrestler of all time. Um, Scott Steiner. Ask him to do math for you. <laughs> uh, Don't Buff Bagwell. <laughs> Don't ask him that. Buff Bagwell. He's going to be there. Scott Norton. Hernandez. They're all going to be there. Again, guys that were from the uh, Clutch City show. Um, eh, also, uh, Vincent, a.k.a. Virgil. Yes. Uh, he's he's going to be there also. So, um, and of course, it's other than, you know, just wrestling. They're going to have all kinds of different celebrities and all kinds of different stuff going on there. So, um, so yeah, uh, it's going to be this weekend. And uh, go there, get your pictures with them, get your autographs, all kinds of good stuff. And uh, the boys from Clutch City Production there will also have a booth there. So if you uh, stop on by, they have a lot of stuff to sell, wrestling related and uh, sports related, you know, as far as like 8x10s and autographs and things like that. Right. And just, you know, stop by and tell them hi. Tell them Houston Wrestling Radio sent you. Yes. All right. Uh, Chris, you got anything? Um... Aaron does graphics. Scott so- talks soccer. Um, I think that's all I got. <laughs> Those are some great plugs there. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's get out of here because obviously we're half-assing this uh, the the last half of the show. So uh, before we, you know, ooh, oh, wh- what? Be on the lookout for Chris Jericho's new internet show. Yes. <laughs> I am Chris, but I am Chris Jericho. Is but that- I'm Chris Jericho. That's what it's called. Yeah, we have a link for it up on our Facebook page the, for the the trailer. You're welcome. Yes, thank you, thank, thank you, you, Travis. Thank you. Yes, yes. Hi, hi, hi. What do you got? So yeah, check that out, please. Uh, it it is looking like it's going to be pretty darn funny. Yes. So yeah, that, I'm really looking forward to that. All right. Uh, 
Now that's it, right? That's yes. it. Okay, so just, you know, Hi. plug our stuff. Thank you so much for listening. And, uh, you know, whether you're listening on, uh, HoustonWrestlingRadio.com or you're on the YouTube or you downloaded us off of iTunes or if you're taking us on the go with the Stitcher Radio app, we highly appreciate it. If there's anything that's, uh, you could do on there for in any of those formats, like, you know, clicking a thumbs up button or clicking a like or a plus one or, uh, you know, leaving a comment or a five star review, do it. Do all that crap. Do it now. <laughs> I'll wait. Do it often. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do it often. Um, Tell your so, friends. Indeed. Uh, also, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Houston Wrestling Radio. Uh, you could, you know, leave us a message or whatever. Tell us hi. Post some stuff. Whatever. And then uh, same thing with Twitter. Uh, our Twitter handle is at each wrestling radio. So, there we go. Ta-da. All right. That being said, we're going to have another episode for you next week. Adios, my friends. Keep it classic. Toodles. Why are we recording already? This is we are. Oh, uh, the computer. See, the little line is going. And it's smaller. Here, is that on one or three? Three. It is? Yep. Huh. Is it on internal mic or is it on the snowball? Yeah, snowball. Hmm. Uh... There it goes. Yeah. That's that's the loud annoying that I wanted to, to see. You can stop with the annoying now, Chris. <laughs> That was wonderful. Bravo. I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, yeah, though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away. Hey, boo. Boo.